Today, as I've also done in the past, I'm taking off my writer coach hat and I'm putting on my chaplain hat. I wear two hats around here sometimes. Well, not really. They're both the same hat, but you get the general idea. And I want to share a video with you that's one of the most important videos that I think I've made in the seven years of doing MC Rider. And I realize that's a pretty bold statement, but I truly believe that that is correct. And some of you are going to watch today's video. You're going to love it, and you're going to give it a thumbs up. Some of you are going to watch today's video, and you're going to shrug with indifference. And some of you will get mad and leave a comment below telling me about it, that this is no place for it. But regardless of your response to this video, I hope that you understand where this video is coming from and give me a few minutes to hear me out on this special edition of MC Rider. You know, MC Rider has always been about helping people, whether on a motorcycle or off a motorcycle, and I know of no better way to help people than by sharing the hope that lives within me. These things, little tiny screws. These things are the bane of my existence because every time I've got a screw like this in a project that I'm working on, I know there's a very good chance that I'm gonna drop it and be forced to look for it on the floor. So let me explain why these little guys are such a pain. If you've been with me for a while, you probably already know I'm legally blind in my left eye as a result of an accident several years ago. I've got an older video that tells that whole story. You can find that at mcwriter.com slash I. But I just know from experience when I'm working on something and it's got one of these little bitty screws in it, there's a very good chance that I'm going to drop it and I'm going to have to go looking for that guy on the floor. So do you know how hard this screw is to find on this garage floor? when you're already working with one eye tied behind your back. So the other day I was installing a camera on the Rocket 3 for review and I had a couple of these little, little screws in the project I was working screws. on. And you know what happens next. I'm pulling it out of the camera and I drop it. And you hear this screw fall. So immediately when the screw comes out, you stop doing what you're doing and you just listen. You listen to see if it's going to hit the motorcycle, which is going to make it bounce further off, or is it going directly to the floor? So the screw fell out, and I stopped. And I heard it hit the floor, and I heard a few bounces going away from me. The next big question is, what direction were those bounces going? So the most obvious place to start is looking directly under the motorcycle. Well, it wasn't there. Maybe it's wedged against one of the tires, so you roll a motorcycle forward a few inches, look for it under the tires, not there. You look to the front of the motorcycle, you look to the rear of the motorcycle, you look to the left and the right. So 15 minutes into looking for this little, little tiny screw, tiny this screen. frustrated and half-blind rider coach was about to give up his search when I had one last idea. It's possible, I guess, that this screw hit the floor and bounced and rolled all the way to the garage door. You know, it's not likely, but I had looked everywhere else and I hadn't been able to find this thing. So I got the idea that I would lift the garage door up a little bit and I would look along the seal of the garage door and see if I could find this screw. So I get down on one knee for a better view. I tap the button on the garage door opener and it begins to rise. As it rises, light from the setting sun begins to stream in under the door. And what was hidden from me a few seconds before has come into clear view. There's the screw right in the middle of the floor that is now glistening in the light and casting a long shadow across the garage floor. You know, the Bible has a whole lot to say about light. From the beginning of creation to eternity in heaven, light is the recurring theme. God in the beginning said, let there be light in Genesis 1-3. When God got Moses' attention, he appeared in a burning bush, light in Exodus 3-1. God is often referred to as pure light. You know, even when Jesus began his earthly ministry, as described in the book of John, John used the word light to announce his coming. Not only did he use the word light, but he hammered the word light into the beginning text or the beginning verses of John chapter 1. Let's look at John chapter 1 verses 4 through 9. And let's see how many times John uses the word light. 
So John says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This is John the Baptist. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light, the true light, who is Jesus, which gives light to everyone who is coming into the world. You know, seven times John hammers that word light in the first few verses of his eyewitness account on the life of Jesus. Now, here is an interesting question. Why do you think John, and why does the Bible, for that matter, beginning to end, hammer on that word light? What is it about light that the Bible is trying to convey to us? Well, suppose you came to my house for a visit, and I was giving you a tour of my house. We walk into the living room, and I reach over, and I turn the light switch on. I look at you and say, you know, I turned this light switch on, so the room is now lit up so you can see the room better. So we walk from that room, we go into the kitchen. I turn the light on, I look at you and say, well, I turn the light on in this room so you can see the kitchen better as well. From room to room, we go through the house and I turn the light on and I announce to you, I've turned the light on so that you can see this room better. How long would it take before you started to think I was crazy for continually turning the light on and then telling you that the light was on? You'd probably think to yourself, you don't have to tell me that the light's on, just turn the light on. Now here's something to think about. You might think only a blind man can't see that you're turning the light on. And what does that say about the state of mankind in relationship to God? Because we are spiritually blind all throughout the history of the world. God has been saying, the light is on. Hey, you may not see it, but the light is on. Hey, you may not realize it, but Jesus is the light of the world. In the beginning, God created light and separated the darkness. As we said, light got Moses' attention in the burning bush. The psalmist said, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Jesus said, your eye is a lamp of the body, and when your eyes are healthy, your whole body is also full of light. But when you are unhealthy, your body is full of darkness. Revelation talks about God lighting heaven for eternity. These are just a few of the references in God's word about light. Throughout history, God, by any means possible, has been saying, the light's good, the light is coming, the light is here, the light directs your path. How blind is mankind throughout history that God must hammer the fact that the light is on, that the light is on, that the light is on, and by it we can see the truth. So the Bible tells us something about why God must continually tell us that the light is on. In 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 it says, In their case the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So here's a very sobering verse, and these are the words of Jesus himself in John 3.19-20. He says, And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. So the Bible says we willfully reject the light when we love the darkness more than the light, and we don't come to the light for fear of our misdeeds being exposed to the light. But we often just go through life and rarely consider any of this. We take pride in saying, I'm just going to live my life how I see fit, and I don't care what anyone has to say about it. And over time, we reject the light, we reject the light, we reject the light, and we forget or fail to notice that now we're walking blind in total darkness. So I mentioned briefly that I'm blind in my left eye. When that injury occurred and I was hit with the baseball, I had large cuts all around the eye and it immediately swelled completely shut. So we left the baseball field and we went to the ER room to get looked at. As we were in the emergency room, we had to wait for the ophthalmologist to come in and assess the damage. And I remember laying on the table, they placed a patch over my good eye to protect it, and they started examining my bad eye. So the doctor said, I'm gonna need to get rid of some of this swelling, and then I'm gonna use a tool to pry your eye open so that I can look for possible damage. 
He said it would be a little bit uncomfortable, but honestly, there was a lot of nerve damage and I really couldn't feel a whole lot as he was, you know, tugging and pulling on it. So after a few minutes of working on me, the doctor said, let me know when you can see the light. And I said, well, okay, let me know when you've got my eye open. He said, it's wide open right now, Kevin. I said, I can't see a thing. And that's how I found out I was blind in my left eye. But here's the thing. I didn't know I was blind until someone told me I was blind. And that, my friends, is what I'm trying to respectfully and lovingly tell many of you today. You're blind. You're trying to live your life on your terms. You're wandering in darkness, separated from God. Many of you know this. Many of you feel this in your heart, but you don't necessarily know how to deal with it or what to do about it. But today, God is shining a light into your life. He's once again trying to get your attention. The Word of God has a way of prying our eyes open so that we can see the light. You know, I would have reached into my bank account that day and given that doctor everything in it to fix my eye, but it couldn't be fixed. The blindness was permanent. But there's good news for you. The price has already been paid to restore your sight. You know, Jesus' final words on the cross before he died were, it is finished. Well, what's finished? The price was paid to restore your sight. It's done. It's paid for. It's wrapped up in a box and it's sitting under a Christmas tree, but it's waiting for you to open it. But remember, when we read earlier in John 3.20, Jesus said, For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. Your sin is what separates you from God, and your desire to hold on to that is what's keeping you from living a life for Christ. So what is it that you're holding on to? What is it that you cling to instead of coming to Christ? Is what you're holding on to bringing you peace? You know, peace is much different than happiness. The whole world pursues happiness. Happiness is temporary. It comes and it goes. When a guy gets a new motorcycle, he's happy. When he drops his new motorcycle, he's sad. I got a new job, I'm happy. My boss hates me, I'm sad. You know, there's nothing wrong with happiness, but happiness is based on constantly changing circumstances, and many people spend their entire life chasing happiness when what they really crave in their life is peace. Peace, the kind of peace that God brings that surpasses all human understanding. It's not dependent on external circumstances, but it's a profound sense of calm and rest that comes from a deep relationship with God. You know, I wasn't happy about my eye injury, but today I am at total peace with that because God has used that to bring so many other great things into my life. And knowing what I know now, I wouldn't go back and change anything about the past. That was the path that I went down, and that is the path that God has brought peace into my life and he has taught me so much from that. You know, pursuing the things of this world may bring you temporary happiness, but living in the light of Christ will bring you peace. In order to walk in the light of Christ, Bible says that we must repent of our sin. That means that we agree with God about what sin actually is, so we get our marching orders from scripture and following him, which simply means trusting him or having faith in God. You know, no one is born a Christian. You're not a Christian by going to church. You're not a Christian by living in a so-called Christian country or even believing in God because even the devil believes in God. Jesus said in order to be a Christian, you must be born again. But what does that mean? Well, we're born again when we give up our old life. We repent. We walk away from the things that have been separating us from Christ and we trust in him for our salvation. So I want to leave you with one other quote from Jesus to think about. In John 8, chapter 12, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Notice what Jesus said there. He said, whoever follows me, you have to leave where you are to follow Christ. You no longer call the shots. In fact, we're terrible at calling the shots of our own life anyway. We give that up to Christ to follow him and trust in him. So I hope you will at least give thoughts to the words of this video. It is one of the most important decisions that every person has to make in their life. 
and it's one that we all do have to make. So the question is, will you walk in the light or will you continue to walk in darkness? You know, what are you holding on to that's keeping you from walking in the light of Christ? For some of you, it's time to lay it down, to lay it aside, repent, and trust in Jesus. You know this in your heart. You're holding on to the things of this world that are only going to lead to death, but laying them aside and following Christ will lead you to life and light in Christ. So if you're a Christian, you're watching this video, I want you to share your testimony in the comments below. Doesn't have to be anything elaborate, just share what it means for you when you walked out of darkness and into the light of Christ. You know, I've already heard from some of you, you've shared your testimonies with me in email and God has completely and totally transformed your life. But no matter your experience, it may just be the thing that someone needs to hear in the comments to give them the courage to follow along as well. So if you're a believer, just share your story in the comments below. I would love to read them myself. So whether you agree or disagree with this video, I want to say thank you for hearing me out. I pray that God will use this video for its intended purpose. And I pray that those who are tired of stumbling in darkness will find the light of Christ this holiday season. I'm looking forward to another year of MC Rider. Thanks for being on this road trip with me. The pleasure is all mine. Till after the holidays, guys, it's Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.